Sponsored by Ukrainian Credit Union, believe it or not, it's me, Ron Kahoot, with... Stay Ukrainian, my friends! Stay Ukrainian, my friends. Well, in case you didn't know, there's a war going on in Ukraine. Um, and it's with Russia. Surprise, surprise. Um, Paul Grod is... You are on the Committee for Defenders of Ukraine? Correct. It, it started with the Ukrainian World Congress. They so the Defenders of Ukraine Fund was uh, created by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress as part of the Invictus Games. Oh. So when uh, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress put together a broad-based community uh, organized committee to help uh, the uh, Invictus uh, participants from Ukraine, the Team Ukraine, to uh, welcome them as they came to Canada, uh, to ensure that our community strongly cheered them on, and to organize various welcoming and uh, and other events to support the team. Uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to really do something meaningful in addition to supporting the team here, and that was to raise funds for uh, those warriors that have been wounded by the Russian war uh, against the Ukrainian people. So the Ukrainian Canadian Congress decided to create the Defenders of Ukraine Fund, a fund is a Hisniki Ukraine, and during the uh, during Victus Gala that was held in Toronto, where Prime Minister Trudeau, President Poroshenko, uh, many Many ministers and members of parliament participated. Thanks to the generous donation of our sponsors and the participants in the uh, Invictus Gala, we were able to raise $100,000 uh, for the wounded warriors or the uh, defenders of Ukraine fund, and uh, which was earmarked to help support those defenders of Ukraine and their families who have been uh, who have been scarred by by this war. So the uh, we we had a call to act or call to uh, applications for organizations that are supporting those uh, those defenders of Ukraine and their families, and we were surprised with uh, over 80 applications uh, from 80 organizations came to uh, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress to fund their very good work. Uh, so our committee reviewed uh, those uh, those applications and we selected four recipients or four organizations. Uh, and we uh, announced that uh, just last week in Kyiv, uh, together with uh, I was in Ukraine for that announcement, where we brought together the representatives of the uh, Invictus team, uh, wounded uh, wounded soldiers, uh, their families, uh, government representatives, and uh, also the four project or four organizations that are the recipients of these funds. So we're looking to help uh, uh, those uh, affected uh, soldiers and their families through various projects, including uh, PTSD training, um, also with uh, helping reintegrate uh, soldiers uh, into society. Uh, there's an interesting program called Boots to Business. How do we teach uh, uh, those uh, soldiers to become uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, and be uh, valuable members of society? Because that's often a big challenge in, in Ukraine. You have physical disability, but you also have emotional disability, and not just of those soldiers, but also of their families and their children. So. It's, uh, it's very, very important. And this problem is not going away, Ron. The issue is that we see that on a weekly basis, uh, Ukrainian men and women uh, are dying on the front lines uh, as a result of uh, Russia's uh, continuing uh, uh, military aggression in Ukraine. And so this issue is going to continue to boil over. And it's, we're doing one little part of it, but I think this is something we need to really continue. This extends about. beyond benevolence. I mean, this, this is a necessity, isn't it? Absolutely, and I think it's important that we started it with the Ukrainian uh, community in Canada, and uh, with the Invictus Games taking place in Australia this September, we've been in work. We've been working with uh, our counterparts uh, in the Ukrainian community in Australia, and they want to continue to build on this Defenders of Ukraine fund. And we're also going to be calling on not just our community and and others to support those uh, those soldiers who uh, continue to be uh, uh, to be traumatized by uh, by the war in Ukraine. Now there's still Shetraba Dosich Bahato Roshe Shetraba Tak. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars is a drop in the bucket. Certainly it is. And where can people donate? So you can donate. Uh, so this uh, Defenders of Ukraine Fund is being done in partnership with the Canada Ukraine Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm uh, that is working with us to uh, to support all humanitarian projects that our community is doing in Ukraine. So the Canada Ukraine Foundation has on their website, uh, they are taking donations 
uh, under the Defenders of Ukraine Fund, and we do encourage our community to continue to give generously. And we will continue to have annual calls for projects uh, in Ukraine. We have a well-developed system. We're working with uh, many NGOs in Ukraine. We're working with those soldiers and those organizations that are providing us with a lot of guidance as to what we should be funding. Now, as is our military here, they're, they're, uh, they're supporting, they're training soldiers there as well. And, and uh, uh, so the money doesn't go to individuals necessarily, it goes to organizations and then they, they decide to whom this money would be distributed. It's not really uh, money that's going to fund people for their, um, you yeah. know, for salaries or for, I mean, these monies are being used to roll out programs that will provide for those families. So for example, uh, uh, wives uh, and, and families of uh, wounded warriors who need uh, emotional support, uh, who need uh, training uh, for PTSD. And there's also projects where they're training the trainers. So they're teaching, for example, uh, uh, wives of wounded soldiers uh, how to train other and work with other uh, women. So it's kind of force multiplying uh, those opportunities. There are, as I mentioned, projects that are helping reintegrate uh, soldiers into society, giving them necessary life skills to be successful. So it's not funding a soldier or funding, uh, it's really, it's helping to reintegrate um, and to deal with emotional trauma and other traumas. Now you, of course, go to Ukraine quite often. Have you been to the front? I have. I've been to the front lines in Mariupol. I've had, a, I've had the opportunity. Isn't that like leaning into a left hook, Paul? Uh, it was a very, very uh, uh, fascinating, but it was really, uh, it was amazing experience because uh, you saw firsthand and you heard the bullets firsthand and you met those brave uh, men and women who weren't afraid to fight. When I stood there on the, on the very front lines and I looked through the binoculars and I could see the Russians oh on the my. other side, and I said to, the, I said to them, the, the, the men who were standing there with me, I said, so what happens if they come across? And they said, they're gonna fight to the end. And the morale there, the commitment there, the patriotism there is quite amazing. And by the way, most of them were speaking to me in Russian. So these are patriots Ukrainians uh, many of them speak Ukrainian, but none of them don't. But the whole point is that this war has unified the, Ukrainian, the Ukrainians, and they finally understood who the real enemy is. And that's important for us to understand that we will be at war with the Putin regime for uh, potentially generations to come, because there is a mentality that <clears throat> they don't recognize the Ukrainian people as their own nation. And that will be challenging. We're finally coming to realize that after uh, several decades, that you know what happened to the Ukrainians during the Holodomor, that same attitude exists today in Russia, and it's a very scary proposition. That's why we need to be Ukrainian. Uh, you need to be Ukrainians all over the world so that we can ensure that the international community continues to support Ukraine. And they certainly, the Russians certainly know how to tell a story. There's a uh, very quick joke that uh, there's a book called Look Comrade, the People Are Laughing. Mm -hmm. And in it, it was a uh, little anecdote about uh, Eisenhower and Khrushchev. They ran a foot race around Red Square, just the two of them, and Eisenhower won. U.S. papers said that Eisenhower won the foot race. Well, Pravda said that, uh, uh, that um, Khrushchev came in second and Eisenhower came in second last. <laughs> and they're just wonderful at, at twisting stuff like that, aren't they? And, and, and trying to put one over on the world, and we've just got to stop it. It's got, like, come on. Like, people have to start realizing that this guy is a nut bar and he doesn't care. You know, Ron, kind of like when, uh, you know, you and I would, uh, in the Soviet days, stand in front of the uh, Massey Hall and demonstrate <laughs> that I'd rather right. be dead than red. Um, uh, and we were, and I was we, raised we were with the attitude of being some kind of wacko, like and, and anarchists. We, and we know? were raised with the attitude that we have to be Ukrainian because Ukraine is fighting for its independence. Well, you know what, Ron, uh, we have to be Ukrainian because Ukraine is still fighting for its independence and will for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So uh, we really need to stay Ukrainian. My friends. My friends. Get on the web. It's on the uh, various websites. Where? UCC.ca and the Kennedy Crane Foundation. And anything that you can do, anything you can do, is greatly appreciated. You have to speak to some of these soldiers to find out just how much it is appreciated. When some of them, spo I've spoken with some of them, and they're talking and they're speaking with me, and they have a tear in their eye, you know. And it's not because they're, it's, it's, it's not because they're getting the help, or you know, they, but it's just they're getting the support, and that's so much more than, than, 
than anything else, you know. And and uh, same with the with the Canadian military when they go out there. And it was so heartwarming when we were we were here for the uh, the gala um, that the Canadian military is just as much into it. I mean, they they want to go. They're passionate about it, and what's amazing is that we will have hundreds, if not thousands, of Canadian soldiers who have, over the course of time, served in Ukraine, and they have become a little part of them have become Ukrainian patriots. Yeah, and it's nice that the head guy of the army is Ukrainian. Absolutely, uh, he's no actually the he's head of the military or second is second in command for the entire military and head of the Canadian Armed Forces. He was given that distinction already. Yes. A nash. Nash. That's great, And huh? he's very proud of his Ukrainian heritage and Ukrainian roots, and uh, he's spoken about that. I've heard him speak about that at the Hill 70 uh, launch in, in, in uh, Lens, France. And so he's very, very proud of his Ukrainian roots. He, uh, the only thing he regrets is that he wants to join you on the no-fly list. <laughs> and that's what he said. He says, if there's a list I want to get on, it's that one. You still on it? I'm still on it. I'm doing my best to make sure that I that stay on it. That you stay on it. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, oh, man, you can't go to Russia. Well, that's okay. Who wants to? This is staying Ukrainian, my friends. Here and there. Do it. Stay Ukrainian, my friends. Stay Ukrainian, Sponsored by Ukrainian Credit friends. Union. Believe it or not, it's stay me, Ukrainian, Ron Kahoot, with. Stay Ukrainian, my friends. Stay Ukrainian, my friends. Still needs an accordion.